former Edo State Governor uh, Godwin Obasaki is now placed on watch list. EFCC places Obasaki on watch list and begins contract probe. Can you imagine? I know that uh, the new governor, Mondo Pueblo, actually had been talking about irregularities in Obasaki's government, including over 500 government vehicles missing. Um, and some contracts that were awarded without following due processes and even dissolving the uh, Basaki's cabinet and recently now setting up a panel to probe Basaki's administration. Now, with all of this culminating uh, into investigation, Basaki is now placed on watch list by the EFCC. <laughs> now, wow. Now, the PDP governors, EFCC, they follow. They are following... Uh, Ex Governor Kua, now they are following Obasaki. But meanwhile, Yaya Billy is there, they can't do him anything. Now, for this paper, I'm telling you. Again, let's dive into the details to see the direction the FCC is going with the Edo State new government. Former Governor of Edo State, Gordon Obasaki, is on the watch list of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the punch has learned. Hmm. So, this is just as our correspondent gathered that. The anti grant agency had commenced an investigation into transactions, including contracts awarded during his tenure as the governor of Edo State. Obaseki, who bowed out of office on November 12th after an eight year tenure, had said the EFCC planned to arrest him soon after stepping out of office. Of course, the handwritings were clearly on the wall. So his successor, Mondo Pueblo, had just established a 14 member state asset verification committee to investigate his uh, tenor. Similarly, the EFCC had on November 2 arrested five Edo government officials who served under Obasaki, including the Accountant General of Edo State, Julius Anelu, over huge withdrawals from the state treasury within a short period of time. But Obasaki had on November 8 said he was not scared of probe by the EFCC. So the former governor said he would be willing to submit himself to the anti graft agency to give an account of his tenure. Hmm. However, top sources in the commission who pleaded anonymity because they were not permitted to speak on the matter said so far the bulk of the transactions under Obasaki's administration had not been directly linked to him. So the sources said an investigation has commenced on his administration. He can't just be invited until the work has got to a certain stage. Some team uh, of crack investigators have been assigned to the case and have been trying to unravel some of the transactions, including contracts awarded under his administration. So the bulk of the transactions you can't trace to him. He made use of others. There have been leads which we have been following and we hope to get something substantial. Ask if Obasaki had been watchlisted. Another source said, though not limited to Obasaki, all former governors uh, are being watchlisted by the commission. So all former governors are always on the commission's uh, watchlist, whether the commission has something with the fellow or not. So we are not going to allow them to jet out of the country and then start going after them when we need them. So that so that's why we always place all of them on our watch list, the source said. So efforts to get the EFCC head of media and publicity, Dele Oyewale, proved abortive as calls to his line were not answered. He had yet to respond to a text message sent to him on the matter as of the time of filing the report. Can you imagine? So now, Obasaki is being watchlisted. Well, what I'm saying is that that is not peculiar to Obasaki alone. All former governors have been watchlisted, so whether they have anything against them or not, for a while, so that if for some reasons they need them, they wouldn't be going after them when they are abroad, and it will be easy for them to start abroad on exile. Okay. So, but what I'm saying here is that uh, probe has started, but up to now, nothing has been traced to Obasaki directly. 
because all the contracts that we awarded or all the transactions that they have seen so far were not done directly by Abasaki. He used other people to do it. Hmm. Now, wow. So now that he used other people to do it, how are they going to get him? Because it's not going to be easy to get him. I tell you, it is not going to be easy to get him. So Pueblo is bent on making sure that he get headway into knowing what happened in Obasaki's government, especially with the award of contracts. There are a lot of things. And the five uh, uh, those state government officials that were arrested a few days before Obasaki handed over, uh, including the accountant general of Edo State under Basaki and Nelu, uh, all of them are st Julius and Nelu. All of them, uh, we don't know whether they have been released or they are still in EFCC custody till now because of the huge amount of money they withdrew out of Edo State coffers, you know, within a very short period. So, but what we are saying here, Basaki is still saying that he's not uh, scared of, uh, you know, responding to EFCC, that even if they want him, he's, he will be free and. Uh, you know, fearless enough to turn up himself to the EFCC for investigation if need be. So now that he has been placed on watch list, and now that uh, the 14 man committee has been put together by a Pueblo to probe uh, Basaki's administration, including contracts that they awarded, then let's see how they will go. Already the committee is saying that for now, they have not invited the Basaki because they don't have any reason to or uh, to invite him nothing has been traced to him yet with all that have, they have seen so far other people were used to do it so until they trace something to him before they can invite him he said they're already you know following up a lot of key people in the in those activities and they're hoping to find something substantial that through which they can then invite uh, obaseki oh. i know that the target here is obaseki it's not just anything they want to see how they can humiliate Obasaki further. And uh, whether Shomali left office, who probed him? It was the Shomali hand completely clean. The question is, all the politicians in Nigeria are dirty, both the past, the present, and the majority of the future. So all of them are dirty, that is the truth. And that is why the uh, investigation in Nigeria is a witch hunt. It's a, it's a kind of personal vendetta. There's nothing, sometimes nothing comes out of it. And even at that, even the ones that they have caught with some substantial evidence, what did they do? Okay, somebody will steal a, a 10 billion naira and he will bail himself with a 5 million naira and they go with uh, the rest. So what kind of investigation is that? That is the problem. And that's why people think they can still steal and steal. You steal 2 billion, you bail yourself with uh, 2 million naira. The rest is in your coffers and wherever you save them. Nobody goes after, you know, liquidating everything that somebody has stolen. Assuming that is what they're doing, I'm telling you, Nigeria would have been very great by now. And we're waiting for a government that will do that. When you catch somebody with some huge amount of money, retrieve everything the person has. And by so doing, nobody will steal. Not that somebody will steal 10, 10, 10 billion, he will bail himself with uh, 3 million naira. And you say that is the case. You have recovered money. How much have you recovered? second base jerry so thank you for listening let's have a comment as so basically is now on watch list and uh, he can't just leave anyhow